So it is finally time. It is finally time. Fleetwood Mac, worst to best. Fleetwood Mac has become a cultural phenomenon throughout the decades. Um, and they have a very, very long, very rich, very complicated history that um, I'm not really going to get into in this video. I'm just going to talk about the albums. Fleetwood Mac, known for being, you know, a very dysfunctional at times, but very, very good musical group. Uh, they created one of the most uh, enjoyed and well-known and um, loved albums of all time. And uh, most recently, they've been known for um, a dude riding a skateboard, drinking a UTI healing potion, and uh, mouthing along to uh, arguably one of their most overrated songs. That doesn't mean that it's not good, I just, I'm not a huge fan of it. Now, I don't want to disappoint any of you early Fleetwood Mac fans out here, but I'm barely going to mention any of their earlier albums or, you know, their very late albums, um, you know, from the 90s and 2000s. Um, mainly because, come on, let's be real here, everything made before this album is totally irrelevant. So, if you don't like that, my bad, my apologies, but you know that's the truth. Now let's get into this list. This album can be described very, very simply. This is what happens when you don't put Nyx or Buckingham on an album. The last thing I want from a Fleetwood Mac album is prog rock, especially one where they don't even follow the correct forms of prog rock, so uh, yeah, no, I'll pass on this album too. Lindsey Buckingham really is the main source of talent behind these albums, because just like with 1990's Behind the Mask, there's no Lindsey Buckingham and it really lacks. The only good thing about this album is the arrival of Christine McVie. And yeah. But it was at least a sign of uh, things to come. I'm going to be honest with you here. I didn't listen to this album. I didn't listen to it. I was going to, but then I took a look at that cover. What? What is even the point of that? Why? That's disgusting. I don't. I just, I don't know, I don't understand. I understand that you shouldn't judge an album by its cover, but come on, I can't, I can't, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I, hopefully it's in the right spot. I just, I can't do it, I'm sorry. I can't do it. The album sounds like what the cover looks like. Also, there's no Nicks or Buckingham. Now, this album does have a little bit of a prog rock groove to it, but it's not like the main feature throughout, um, you know, the, the, the tracks of the album. So it's not uh, very prog rock heavy, and it actually does a pretty good uh, solid to the album because it makes it sound uh, more like the uh, Fleetwood Mac that we would hear throughout the late 70s and 80s. So, um, it was obvious that, uh, the potential for this band to become one of the best ever was there. Um, they just haven't fully, uh, discovered that yet. Ah, yes, the album that proved just how important Christine McPhee was to the group. And that's all I gotta say about that. This album sounds just like any other early 70s soft rock album. It's a good thing I like early 70s soft rock. Let's go! It's been three months since the concept of this video idea has come into, you know, real life, and it's been just about as long since I've listened to their debut, and I still cannot think of a better way to describe this album than by just saying this is every other late 60s rock album. The cover is at least better than Mr. Wonderful, I'll give him that. 
And it's a good thing I was able to get past the cover on this album because the music that lies inside of it is actually a really good demonstration of what is about to come in the next decade for this band. Ah yes, heroes are hard to find. This is probably the best uh, album that does not feature Stevie Nicks or Lindsey Buckingham, and it's also the last album to not feature the duo um, from that first uh, early Fleetwood Mac era. Um, after this album, uh, things started to get crazy. Things started to get different. Time started to change, and music was about to be changed forever. Yes, sir, we are here! We are at the big albums. Now, I'm gonna tell you what. The first part of this video, we were just talking about some of Fleetwood Mac's albums. Now, we're going to talk about THE Fleetwood Mac albums. These are the albums that define the band. These are the true great albums of Fleetwood Mac. This is what Fleetwood Mac is. Do you always the rebirth of Fleetwood Mac in 1975 was very, very, very needed. Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks brought sounds and talent to the band that no one has ever seen before. And that, along with the talent of other members like Mick Fleetwood and Christine McVie, they all meshed together and they created a line of very, very beautifully put together albums starting with 1975's self-titled Fleetwood Mac. Uh, my personal favorite track on the album is Crystal. You should check that one out. It is not as good as uh, uh, Buckingham and Nick's uh, original uh, version of it that they released on their duo album uh, a few years prior to this, but it's still really good and uh, it's still probably the best track on the album. God, I love this album! I really, really do love this album. This is a fantastic album. Um, where do I begin with this? Mirage came out in 1982, and it was the first Fleetwood Mac album in three years. And while it wasn't exactly as good as the, the predecessors to this album, um, it still showed them that they could stay in the forefront of music even as the decades changed and um, music got way more synthier. This album has a very retro vibe and they exploit it a lot and it really works. And um, it brings a whole new sound to 1982 that not a lot of people were seeing. And um, it just, it was very well needed. The album was very well needed and it proved to everybody that this band could uh, th not only survive but thrive in the um, next decade. The retro sound from this album would also be very heavily used in Stevie Nicks' solo album, Belladonna, which would be released around the same time as Mirage. And um, if I had to pick a favorite track on this album, I would probably say it would be Wish You Were Here, which is um, a beautiful piano-driven ballad um, that I would totally recommend checking out. <laughs> Take the sound that Fleetwood Mac is known for, throw in some Aquanet and a Yamaha DX7, and you've got Tango in the Night, released in 1987. All I can say about this album is, go listen to it, the whole thing through, it is an absolute masterpiece filled with banger after banger after banger. It is personally my favorite Fleetwood Mac album, and... What else do I gotta say? Just go listen to it for yourself. My favorite track on this album is Seven Wonders, but Little Eyes is also a banger too. God, I love Tusk. Tusk is a fantastic... I take back the statement that I said it in or, uh, Tango in the Night. Tusk is my favorite Fleetwood Mac album. Uh... 
as a marching band nerd, it really uh, makes me feel giddy and happy and warm inside to uh, see Tusk on here. Um, and just to know that it exists, because it is a very good marching band tune. But the album also has other classics, like Sarah, which is uh, one of my favorite uh, Fleetwood Mac songs, and personally, I think that it is one of Fleetwood Mac's best songs ever. You've probably heard Tusk in marching band form before, especially if you are a part of uh, USC's marching band, because this is the one of USC's marching band's anthems. Tusk is a great great album, but in terms of ranking these albums, it comes up just short. Ironically, just like USC's football team. Hurts, doesn't it? Go Bucks. This album is more than just a couple of songs compiled together. It's so much more than that. I'm scripted. I don't know if you could tell. I'm pretty scripted. I'm going unscripted. Because words can't even describe how good this album is. So why even read why even try to read them off of a computer? Rumors is not just an album. It's an experience. And to understand the trouble and the drama and the emotions running rampant uh, throughout the creation of this masterpiece, you'd have to go through so much. And... In the end, they all came together. All of the fighting band members, they came together and they created this album. And not only were they able to defy all odds, stay together as a group and write and make an album, they also were able to use the drama that they were going through as fuel to write arguably the greatest album of all time. You really feel the passion and emotion in songs like the piano ballad Songbird that is sang by Christine McVie or the probably the most well-known song off of the album that almost everyone knows, Go Your Own Way. Not to mention that there are also just total earworms that make their way onto this album, like You Make Loving Fun, which is my favorite song off of the album. And... Never Going Back Again, which is, uh, you know, a simple guitar ballad by Lindsey Buckingham. You can't... It is impossible to not like this album. This album spawned a generation of music, and... As that dude riding the skateboard drinking ocean spray can prove to you, the album has lived in music relevancy for almost 45 years. How do you top that? At what band can you... What band can you even compare that to? Queen, maybe. Bohemian Rhapsody is still pretty big here. I, 
know that the song was released in the mid 70s and it recharted in 1992 after it was used in Wayne's World. But Dreams, which came off of Rumors, charted at number 12. In 2020, 43 years after the, the album was released. This album is on tiers with, like it's on the same tier as albums like The Wall. And Abbey Road. And Pet Sound. And it is an album that has changed many people's lives, including mine as an aspiring music producer, music critic, you know, just somebody who wants to be able to live a life in music. This is all coming from in here because this album has affected me so heavily and this album I'll be shocked if this album breaks a hundred views but somehow you know Stevie Nicks Lindsey Buckingham Mick Christine everybody if you somehow stumble across this I just want to let you know thank you for making this video or I just want to thank you for making this album because it changed so many people's lives including mine this has been the ranking of Fleetwood Mac albums I'll see you guys next time.